How's it going, everyone? Welcome to Catching Up with Carly, presented by Meyer. Today, I am joined by Tigers alum and 1968 World Series champion, John Warden. John, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. How have you been? Carly, it's, it seems like I've known you all my life. I've been well. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. What have you been doing to keep busy in quarantine? Well, there's a lot of crossword puzzles and, uh, you know, it's just uh, walking around, you know, do a little walk up and down the sidewalk, stay, uh, stay loose, watch a lot of TV. I, I, uh, my wife and I binge to watch the, the Tiger, Joe, uh, Joe Exotic, <laughs> yesterday. It was on Netflix. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to take a trip down memory lane, and let's start with your season playing for the Detroit Tigers. What was it like pitching for a club in the big leagues? Well, it's unbelievable. I was 21 years old. I was the youngest uh, kid on the team. And I played two years of A ball, which they have A, double A, triple A, and then the big league. Mm -hmm. And, you know, nobody goes from A ball to the big league. You either go to double A and then triple A or blah, blah, blah. But I, I had pretty, two pretty good back to back years. And uh, I got put on the big league roster and went to uh, spring training in 68 with the big club. You know, K Line and Cash and Horton and and uh, Danny McClain and Lowich. We were loaded with, with hitting. Oh yeah. You know, just don't, I mean we were stacked. Now let's talk about one uh, specific teammate you mentioned, the late Al K Line. The world of baseball definitely lost a good one with his passing. Can you tell uh, me about the relationship you had with Mr. Tiger both on and off the field? Al K Line was just a consummate player, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, when he walked in the room it was like your high school principal coming into your math class. Everybody's just set up straight. And, <laughs> I mean, at Al Kaline, you know, he, but he had that personality. He had to personify the, you know, stature. And he just never could let go. He wasn't a raw, raw guy. Mm -hmm. He led by you know, his leadership was his bat and his glove. And he, he could play. And uh, it's just amazing. Of course, I didn't, I'd never met him before. So that's my first, you know, spring training, first time I'd ever met these, some of these guys. So, but Al K line, everybody, you wore that old English tee, you were one of his best friends because he loved the Tigers. But I'll tell you a funny story. On the way back from St. Louis, we win the, 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 uh, the World Series in the seventh game. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we had a charter plane. I went on the deck down the line. Here's K line. Been with his beautiful wife Louise, and I said, "Al, I pat him on the shoulder, and I said, now, this is his 16th year.' I said, "Al, I've been waiting a long time for this." He goes, "Kiss my ass, Warden. You got your first year." Oh, he was, he was so bad. <laughs> he said, "I've waited 16 years. You get it the first year." So, well, I thought to tell you guys, if you'd have brought me up in '67, we'd have won this. We'd have back to back. Oh, but he, he would always, he, he and I just had that bond. Uh, what is one thing about Mr. K-Line that you know that the general public may not know? But uh, K-Line, sometimes he's misread uh, by being a little bit quiet, a little bit, a little bit of an introvert at times. And they don't know what the passion he had for the town. He loved the fans. And he signed, he signed, he signed uh, autographs like crazy. And... Uh, we had a gal, Peggy, worked in the office, and she would bring in Al, you know, maybe 20, 25 things every day that he was in the office from the mail-in stuff to the stadium, and he'd sit down and sign, like, you know, 15, 20, 25 items, and then uh, she'd mail them out for the fans. And a lot of people don't realize, you know, stuff that he did behind the scenes. What an amazing great, great. man he sounded yeah. like. That was, that's absolutely oh, incredible. Great. What kind of legacy is he leaving behind? One that'll never be topped. There's nobody who can do the things he did. Uh, it's just, I mean, it, it still gets me two weeks. I mean, it was, happened two weeks ago, and, and it still got me. Uh, my gut's still turning when I mm -hmm. talk about Al. And just stand there and say, you know, I love you, and, and you're the guy, and thanks for your help that you brought me along as a rookie. Made sure nobody gave me a crap. So it's it just, uh, and the legacy is just, you know, it's like the, the city of Detroit. You got 
like a Gordy Howe from hockey. Mm-hmm. You got Len Barney, Don Barney, and Night Train Lane, and Dick LeBeau, some of the great uh, Detroit Lions. And uh, and then you got Al Kaline. I right. mean, Pat Cobb was one of the greatest players ever, but he's he's way back in a different era. You know, twenties, thirties. It's a different. It was a different game. And but uh, Al Kaline. I mean, all you gotta do is say six, and everybody everybody that knows baseball knows who you're talking about. Everyone knows, and I am so incredibly sorry for the loss of your close friend. Um, is no. there a message you'd like to leave with Tiger fans during this time? I like to tell the Tiger fans because they're such great fans. And I want to tell them it's been a tough year last year. Don't give up on these kids. Don't give up on them. Buy your tickets. Go out and see these kids play. Root them on because they're just they're rebuilding. They're restarting over. And I, I know they, they've you got a lot rid of a lot of players. You know, Verlander went to Houston and won the World Series, and I'm glad to see Justin get a ring. Uh, they had a lot of great players that they they, that they moved. Uh, Garden Hire, I think, is the right manager for this type of team. Cabrera is probably one of the greatest hitters. Aline even said in the hitting clinic at Fancy Camp, he said, guys, I thought I was a pretty good hitter. Miguel Cabrera is the best hitter I've ever seen. Oh, wow. That's Big time it's right there. It's something. Yeah. That's something. He's, he, he's, listen to this. He's at the cage, and then Miggy says, that, hey, watch this. Holding on right field, second row. It's a, it's a ball. No, it's bad price. It's a ball, second row, right field. Okay. Home run, left field, second row, boom. It's it over there. <laughs> I mean, the guy was unbelievable. But to the fans of Detroit, you know, stay with these guys. You know, bring them through, and and they're gonna they're gonna, Al Vila is gonna do the job, and uh, they'll get some good players, and they'll keep winning. They they got a couple good pitchers coming up that that are gonna make a big splash, and uh, I just don't give up. And even Kaline said when you come to camp, he tell the fans at fancy camp, hey, stick with us. You know, don't give up on these kids. But you know, it's. Uh, it's just the fans, and they're great fans. I, I get stuff. I tell you one thing with this uh, quarantine. There's a lot of people really digging down deep because I've got more fan mail in the last <laughs> three weeks than I have, I have all year. I got three in one day. That's like a miracle for me. I love it. I, I get, love it. You deserve it. I, <laughs> I said, thanks for remembering me. You know? <laughs> Well, John, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to talk with us. We really appreciate it. I hope you and your loved ones stay healthy during this time. Yeah, you guys too. Stay healthy, and I'll be up with them. Once they get the season rolling, uh, I'm looking you guys up. We're going to go have a cold one. (laughs) I'm holding you to it. All right, take care now. All right, take care. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. That's it for this episode of Catching Up with Carly presented by Meyer. Back to you, Daniela.